Hello everyone, today we are talking about fire safety and there's three things I'm going to be covering today. Smoke alarms, working smoke alarms, fire escape plans and how to get out of your home quickly and safely and making sure you stay out if a fire was present. Today we're at my home. I live in a unit here in Sydney but understand that there are different types of houses and places where people live. So I live in a unit, a two bedroom unit. You at home might live in a single story house, a double story house, another unit complex. Doesn't matter where you are, but it's very important to have a working smoke alarm in all the living areas so you and your family can stay safe if a fire was present. Come follow me, I'll take you for a walk through my apartment to show you where my smoke alarm is. You've got a bedroom, bedroom, bathroom. In the hallway, the highest point of the ceiling, I've got a working smoke alarm. Just take note that I live in a small unit here in Sydney and I only have one smoke alarm in my hallway outside my two bedrooms. You might live in a one, two, three story house with multiple bedrooms for your brothers and sisters or people that you live with. You need to make sure that you have a working smoke alarm placed throughout the home to make sure that everyone is safe and they could hear this detector go off if a fire was present. So you're probably asking why it's important to have a working smoke alarm outside your bedroom and not in the kitchen. Well, I'm gonna tell you why. If you were to have one in your kitchen, if you overcook your food or you have, uh, you know, overcook your toast, you might set off the detector. And over time, it can get quite annoying. Carers, family members might knock it off the roof and place it in a different area. But you need to remember that smoke alarms are designed to alert you at all times, but especially when you're sound asleep. And I'm going to explain why. So let's just pretend it's two o'clock in the morning. Okay, you're sound asleep in one of these bedrooms. You don't have a working smoke alarm. As the, smoke, as the smoke creeps into your bedroom, as we said before, the smoke uh, and heat rises, it's slowly going to filter down. While you're sound asleep on the bed, the smoke's gonna come down and it's gonna get to you. A lot of people don't realize is smoke actually puts you more to sleep, okay? Remember, smoke puts you more to sleep. So nine times out of 10, when you hear people that pass away in house fires, it's the smoke, the toxic smoke, not necessarily the hot flames from the fire. It's the smoke that is going to pass you out and make you more unconscious and you're not gonna wake up. So having a working smoke alarm outside your bedroom, it's gonna alert you that you know there's smoke or there's something going on. It's gonna wake you up. You gotta look around, you gotta get down nice and low and you're gonna make your way out of that room. You gotta yell out fire, fire, fire so everyone in your home can understand what you are saying and you are gonna get out of your home quickly and safely. If you have smoke detectors that are used by nine volt batteries, you need to test and inspect them as much as you can, ideally when the clocks change. So daylight saving times, so in a couple of weeks time, um, our clocks are gonna go back an hour. It's a perfect time to check your batteries. Get your family members or yourself to do it as a family exercise to make sure that you A, know where the smoke alarms are and B, how they work. It's very important to know. quite loud. So to test it, a lot of the time there is a test button in the middle there and you could hold it down for three seconds. One, two, three. And it'll keep going while it's pressed down. Take your hand off it and it'll stop. Okay, so you know that it is working correctly and then you place it back up into the bracket. In this case, you look up here, very similar detectors. Okay, place it back in and yeah, just make sure that you always test and inspect it and give it a good clean. If, if you've had a detector for more than five, 10 years, best to go down to your local hardware shop, ring your local fire station, get them come to check it out and um, we, can, we can fix it up for you. Now for the fun part. I've got a fun exercise that you can do at home to prepare you if a fire was present in your home. We call it the left hand, right hand guide out your front door, your back door, your window. It's kind of like a visualization. So obviously you could have someone with you in case something was to happen, but you close your eyes and you pretend that you can't see that well and you're gonna use the right hand to guide you across the walls out the door. So I'm gonna show you how I'll do it from my bedroom to the front door. You ready? Let's do it. All right, picture this, it's two o'clock in the morning. 
you're, in, you're sound asleep, you're in bed, your smoke alarm starts to go off and you think, what's going on? You notice that there's a bit of smoke in your room, you yell out fire, fire, fire. Number one rule, do not panic, stay calm. You need to get down low, okay, as the famous saying is, get down low and go, go, go. So you want to make sure that you get out of your bedroom, okay. Try to determine where the fire is. If you can't, that's okay. Just know how to get out of the closest and safest exit, okay? We call it a right-hand guide or a left-hand guide. Because I know this unit quite well, by doing a left-hand guide, I might go around that way, and if I know there's a fire over in that direction, I wanna stay away from danger. So you wanna do a right-hand guide in this case. So you start moving across. Just remember that you can't see much. The smoke and um, you know the heat, it gets quite dark and you can't see much. So you need to get down nice and low so you can see a bit more visibility. You know, because you've done fire escape plans, so you know that, that that's the entry into the lounge room. Okay, so you keep making your way across. <clears throat> yep. Keep making your way across. And just remember that some places have key hooks here for your keys to get out of your door, okay? In this case, I usually have a key in the back door here. We always leave in the door. But just know to practice to grab a key and know exactly what key to be able to unlock the door because some people deadlock their doors, okay? So in this case, we come across, you know you've got the door handle and you make your way out. Alright, you've just got out of your unit or your home. Number one rule, stay calm. Do not panic, okay? Make your way to the front of the house. Do not go back inside, okay? Do not go in to rescue your pets. Do not go in to get your favourite toy. Do not go in to rescue anyone else. Make sure that people around, members of the public or neighbours can call triple zero to get emergency services on the road, i.e. the fire brigade and the ambulance and the police to come and assist you to make this situation better. Please stay safe around any sort of fire and know what to do if a fire was present. Okay, before we conclude this lesson, things that we learnt, knowing how smoke alarms work, knowing where to place working smoke alarms in your home, talking about different types of homes, units and houses and different levels. We spoke about fire escape plans and knowing how to get out of your home quickly and safely in other exits. We also spoke about a left and a right hand guide to be able to get out your front door or your back door to make sure that you uh, get out of your home quickly and safely if a fire was present. Meeting at the front of the house, remaining calm, calling triple zero, giving the exact location of where you are and what is going on to get the emergency services the best picture on knowing what they're up against. Um, just remember too guys that uh, it's very important to learn fire safety. It could save your life one day. If you want to find out more, find us on livelandsurvive.com.au or find us through socials.